pretty good cooking. Pretty good. Tonight on the show, I'm gonna teach you how to make one of the most requested recipes of all time, cabbage rolls. This is the cabbage. I saw this cabbage at the store and it was huge and I knew it was the one. I told this to the cashier and she compared it to like a school dance moment where me and this cabbage locked eyes across the grocery dance floor and I knew it was the one. How did I know? Because it's huge! This then created a, an immediate problem. How to cook cabbage. Oh, so something to think about is make sure you got a big enough pot. My big pot was holding the Christmas tree up. Now it's not. Preheat the oven to 350. I love that it, it does that automatically. I only had this pot out to show you that your standard five quart pasta pot isn't gonna cut it, fool. In order to make the cabbage leaps pliable, you're gonna need to steam or boil the cabbage. So in this very large pot of water, I'm kinda gonna go in between. I'm gonna like partially boil, partially steam. So just waiting for that to get hot. I am drinking a whiskey highball that John made me using some Japanese whiskey. Suntory whiskey time. It's in Lost in Translation, the movie, I think, but I don't, I don't remember. I haven't seen that movie, but I don't remember. For relaxing times, make it Suntory time. So many people requested this episode. Here's a list of your names. I was so many people. There were like a whole group of people that were like ganging up on me and being like, you gotta make the cabbage rolls. And I was like, I no baby. But then they stopped, they gave up. They gave up hope. It's like, I feel like that's the, that that's the, the, the pretty good cooking delivery schedule. When you just finally give up on us, then we'll make your food. <laughs> Here I have one yellow onion. I've been having a real dickens of a time chopping onions lately. I don't know if it's just like I'm losing mechanical abilities or what, but the YouTube comments suggested that I leave the root end intact while dicing. So let's give it a shot. Let's see if this food hack, which I don't think is a food hack, but in fact a basic kitchen skill that I somehow whack, lives up to the hype. Already, I, I'm gonna tell you. Already, I'm gonna tell you that half this onion is gonna be you because pieces of it fell out. Okay, we left the root end intact. So far, this does feel better, but we're not even to the hard part yet, which is holding our shit together. You want like, oh, f I'm supposed to do the other side. I think I just totally sabotaged the, <laughs> the whole purpose of that. Uh, this is, this is better. It's still, I'm still terrible, but nope, nope, didn't fix my problem. I think, I think I understand what they mean. So, John, John is interpreting this differently and is suggesting that we just leave the root end intact and then make cuts that don't quite go all the way through and leave this piece attached. But so far, I feel like I'm just making like a blooming onion. Um, yeah, that feels better. Still kind of but you know. Yeah, okay, maybe I'll start doing that. I think this is too much onion, actually, <laughs> Jesus. But you know, you know what, just, let's just, let's just, let's just cook it all. Almost had a, a real tragedy on Thanksgiving day. I was hosting this year for the first time. My eyes are all I bet by rubbing them over, no, that will fix them. <laughs> My oniony hand. Yeah, Thanksgiving, I uh, almost ran out of butter. How are you supposed to cook Thanksgiving without butter? My my in-laws brought butter with them from faraway lands. Uh, I think I need a bigger pan now. Let's cook them in a cast iron skillet, why not? It's gonna blow. That shit's gonna f***ing blow. <laughs> there it is. Oop, there it is. Sometimes I like to move the butter around in the pan. I mean, that's how you cook, right? I bet I'm gonna like, look real shitty with like onion eyes. Onion eyes me, Captain. 
What am I doing? I'm just like licking my butter fingers. Uh, uh, all that butter is melting. We could probably core the cabbage. You gotta core this cabbage. Well, that knife's not working. Uh, this can be kind of difficult, but basically I recommend just, uh, just do your best. If you use a pentagon shape, you might activate the Illuminati and they might come and confiscate your cabbage. So do that at your own discretion. Um, another option is to try to cut, once you've like cut slits, you can try to cut all the way through the core and then pull it out as best you can. Once you get a piece of it out, then it's, it's all clear. Maybe this chopstick will help. Yeah! It's got the pay dirt. Oh yeah. I love that cabbage sound. Alright! <laughs> that butter's kind of browning. Let's put some little onion in there. Really, you should probably use like a cup of onions. This is closer to two. And hey, would you look at that? Our water's ready. Okay, so something to think about when you're steaming your cabbage is it's easy to put in, but how are you gonna get it out? I haven't gotten that far yet. Carefully lower your cabbage into the pot. I don't know how to do that without creating a giant sweat. Um, there we go. That's how we'll get it out too. Lid back on. We're gonna let that steam 10-ish minutes, maybe 15. Cooking our onions, we're gonna get some garlic in here. Onions are the, the seat of flavor, which means when the flavor is feeling tired, it takes a sit on an onion. Did you know that all the letters for onion can be found in the, the phrase uh, omniscient newt invite over Ned? There's some garlic. If the onion's the seed of all flavor, then the uh, garlic's the ottoman. The ottoman, yeah. That's what I was gonna say. You stole my thunder. <laughs> Dingus. Here I have some parsley that so we got our onions cooking, we got our cabbage steaming, now we're gonna start working on the filling. Some flat parsley, we're gonna give a, a good mince. Um, I just wanna take this moment to say that I did not grow up eating cabbage rolls. I don't know if I've ever had them. So that's part of why it took me so long to get around to making this, because for most people, cabbage rolls are like very comforting, you know, cozy, you, your oma made it. I never did. Oh, we can also do our uh, our globe segment. Where does this come from? So Europe doesn't look right to me on this map, but um, probably the most famous place that these are from is Poland, and Poland is like, you know, like, on this continent, um, but it's generally considered Eastern European. It's like P -p Pulabki, Pulabki. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that right. Also Polamki. Some, some. Uh, there's like a Romanian version, which is like Salarami, blah 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 blah. But yeah, somewhere in Europa. Nice job. All right, got some ground beef here. This is ground market trim. Well, I don't know what that means. This is a little bit more than a pound, but it's pretty close. We can get our parsley in there. Some of the variations of this will say to cook the meat beforehand. It's not necessary, we're gonna slow cook it. Same thing goes for rice. We're gonna add about a cup of uncooked rice. I'm using some, what is essentially sushi rice, but like, ultimately who cares, it's rice. I'm also gonna add a cup of parmi, which is basically tomato puree. This is, says strained tomatoes, if I can figure out how to open it. You bested me this time, Carton. So a cup of that. And these are just slightly more done. Nah, that'll just throw them in. That looks fine. You can let it cool if you want, but we ain't got time for that. All right, at this point, you can add some salt and pepper. Plenty of kosher salt, fresh black pepper. And I'm gonna give it a little Worcestershire sauce dash, because I feel like it just needs something. This is probably not traditional, but you know, whatever. Looks good. If you think about what this is, kind of like cooking beef, cabbage, and rice and ketchup, so. Uh, you can start by using a spoon to mix. You can incorporate it. It'll look, it'll look absolutely disgusting. I mean, you can throw an egg in if you want. I'll do that, why not? Bada boom. I'm gonna actually use my hands once it cools down a tiny bit. I am gonna use gloves though. This is a food grade, by the way. I made sure. So, incorporate. And if it, it's feeling wet, it's kind of feeling wet to me. You could add other things, or you could like cool it. But it's okay if it's wet, because you're putting it in a cabbage leaf and then putting sauce on it, so it's gonna be wet anyways. 
Looks pretty good to me. Let's check on that cabbage. Surely it's been 10 to 15 minutes by now. Um, at this point, you may consider um, putting like a this into a, a baking pan or something because it's gonna have a lot of water. I just remember not supposed to salt the water. I didn't do that. Basically, the salt helps the, the cabbage break down a little bit. We f***ed up, or I did anyways. All right, come out of there, you big old cabbage, you. That was pretty easy getting out. I'm gonna keep that water boiling because as we peel off leaves, we might need to throw the rest of the cabbage back in. But at the moment, that's gotta cool. If you were working more efficiently than me, this is, you would've like, you would've done something differently and it would've gone better. But here we are. Hey, Vinny. We'll be back. It's time to start peeling leaves off. Wow. I think we did a good job because they're coming off pretty easily. However, this is kind of getting a little weird here. A little weird? Oh, wow. That's huge. Continue to do this as you are able. If it gets difficult to remove them, you can throw it back in the steamer for a while. But you want to make sure you get them as intact as possible. So you got to peel them off in alternating... Maybe this would be easier. This is easier. I'm dumb. I'm just totally amazed at how massive this cabbage is. Water. You can almost think of these as nature's tacos. They're like, vegan tacos? <laughs> From the old country? <laughs> these are so much bigger than everything I saw online. <laughs> so you can see some of them are deformed and weird. Weird. And now it feels like there's resistance. So I'm gonna put it back in the, in the pot. I am the, the sword and the cabbage. I am fit to rule this kitchen. Tis a gentle hand that will rule the land. Oh, God damn it. What have I done? Steam a while longer. Okay, so my cabbage leaves are a bit f***y, but that's, that's life. Um, if you got a big rib, a rib, a big rib, the big, the big, the big rib, you can take a paring knife and flatten out the rib. Like so. But actually, what is even better in it is also to cut a V and just completely remove that piece. I don't really know a great way of doing this process. So I think that I'm gonna actually use um, a spoon tool so that I can handle everything. Actually, I'm gonna take some of that pommy and I'm just gonna cover the bottom of this bar with it. I'm gonna use physics to spread it out. Physics. Take a scoop, give it a ploop. And then you fold, you fold the V like so, and then you fold in the sides, and you're not doing a good job. But there's your first roll. The next one will be better. There it is. This is a much better leaf than the previous one. Okay, better technique this time. Even though my leaves are f***ed up. Fold it in. Fold it in. Oh, it's falling apart. And roll it up. And you put it seam side down in your pan. These are our cabbage rolls. If you're not doing a good job, who's gonna complain? Maybe like your great grandma or something. Somebody will complain. Yeah, we'll be back. I'm gonna keep doing this. I'm not gonna get any better at it though. So just do your best. All right, so that ended up making 10 cabbage rolls. Did I do a good job? Of course I did it. I found the cabbage leaves to be hard to deal with. They just weren't that pliable. Using your saucy cup thing, grab some cabbage water. Maybe like half a cup, then maybe throw a little more pommy in there. A little pommy pommy. Mix it all right up and pour this over your rolls. And then do a better job. Always just do better than me. Well, let's just add some more pommy. This is that tomato garnish. Now we're gonna cover it up with foil and put it in the oven. In the what? In the oven. Oh Lord, I hope I have enough foil. Perfect. Don't worry kids. We'll figure it out. Okay, okay, we got it. Whoa, oh, that's, that's not really working. Man, I'm so smart. What an engineer. That's better than fresh. Oh, every day. This is trouble. Let's put that in the oven. It's on 350. Oh, that'll be fun to pull out. And that has to cook for a really long time, probably like an hour and a half. Oh good, it'll be ready at nine. Okay, toodaloo. So it's been an hour and a half, and in that time, I made and tried all these hot sauces, so I'm dying. But I think the glue is ready. It smells good. I think my, my rig worked. Yeah, 
All right. Woo! Oh boy. So, um, I'm not sure how to know if they're done. I can see like it's like stuff bubbling under the cabbage. Let's uh, let's pick an ugly one. Maybe something in the center. I'm gonna cut in and see what we're working with inside. Are you cooked? That's cooked. So these need to rest for a little bit before we eat them. So be back in a few minutes. <laughs> All right, let's pull it out and try it. Ah, they maintained its cabbaginess. If you want, you can scoop some sauce from the pan, but I don't care. I don't think it's gonna be too hot to eat, but I'm, I'm hungry. That tastes okay. You know what, I, I don't think it's fair to this dish because my mouth is numb. It definitely needs more salt. So much more salt. All the salt. I think it's tasty. Oh, way better with salt. I think I just need to add more salt. I can see how this is comforting and people like it, but I would say it's just okay. <laughs> so anyways, that's how you do it. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I'll eat it. Ooh.